Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Memes of the Week. The best thing you can do for this channel is spank that like button to help this video reach a wider audience. Before I get on with the memes, first a word from today's sponsor, Me the Sandman. If you want to get your hands on this Thought Tears mug, then visit my Teespring store down in the description. You can also get your hands on the Cure for Feminism t-shirt and classic tank top. If someone doesn't like it, then you can ask them if they're being Islamophobic. I also have a Sandman t-shirt and 25% of the sales proceeds go to the artist, as well as the classic Sandman sticker and mug. You can also get the entire Sandman collection through digital download or USB key if you want through email. Those are the sound files for the first five seasons of my channel, so you can have those to take on the go. Each season is 15 US dollars. Finally, you can also talk to me via one-on-one -on -one coaching through Skype for only $45 an hour. My contact email and Teespring shop are the first links down in the description. And now on with the memes. Number one, this woman wonders if beautiful women really have pretty privilege, or if men are just misogynist because we only respect women we find attractive. Actually, it's the other way around. Women only respect men they're attracted to, and she's trying to accuse us of the very same thing she's guilty of. But seriously, respect. I guess for women, simping for them is considered respect nowadays. Moving on is the average man watching a Lonely Fools Girl and Mary Jean dealer buying their fourth car while you're waking up early to live a decent life. Clearly the social contract is broken. Well, at least you have something they lost forever. Dignity. But the only reason OF girls and dealers are even making money is because simps out there can't stop spending their cash. They're living life on easy mode, and all it cost them was their self-respect. Number three, we have a woman with a sign that reads, This is what a feminist looks like which is pretty much exactly what we all expected. Yes, this looks like the typical fat single cat lady who blames her problems on men instead of taking responsibility for them. She fits the stereotype quite well. All she has to do to stop being a feminist is lose 100 pounds, get contacts, and grow her hair out. Beauty is the cure for feminism. Op next, kids today will never know the wrath of the thumb destroyer. Between pushing down on those batteries to see how much juice they still had left, and pressing the buttons on your old Nintendo controller, you had carpal tunnel by the time you turned 10. Today's special snowflakes would sue Duracell for the pain they had to endure if these batteries still existed. If you want to piss off kids today, then get them to basically put their tongues on 9 volt batteries. Number 5, a chess robot grabs and breaks the finger of a 7 year old opponent. The child violated the safety rule by taking a turn too quickly. As that old line in Starship Troopers goes, the child cannot move his chess piece if the robot disables his hand. The robot must have been playing a whole different kind of defensive strategy here. Moving on, shocking nanny cam photos reveal a wife's 20 years of physical abuse towards her husband. Cases like this prove the point that going monk mode saves men's lives. And if the footage was never found, she would have never faced any consequences. Now she might only serve four years in our two-tier justice system. Maybe if there are men's shelters instead of feminists, just shutting them down, we wouldn't be in this mess. This is what happens to beta males who refuse to get divorced. He got 20 years, and she only got four. Number seven, someone says this is like finding a 2021 Mustang with 150,000 miles on it. More like a 2012 Mustang with 450,000 miles. Passed around to 18 drivers and with zero oil changes. With 38 months worth of payments left. On the bright side, at least there aren't any half regains. I'm sure that there's some betas saying to themselves that if she's a widow, it wouldn't be so bad being with her and her brood. Up next, we have a polyamorous group at Disneyland. But why even bother going to Disneyland when you know you won't be fitting in any of the rides? Also, how the hell did she get that ring on? His nails are almost as bad as hers. I think these three people actually count as a six-way from a physics perspective. They're large enough where it no longer counts as a love triangle because they're more of a love hexagon. Most poly couples are usually fat and ugly. Number 9 in Germany, almost 50% of women working in brothels are from Ukraine. Is this the future of people in Ukraine? Young guys being cannon fodder in the East, and women being cock fodder in the West. I wonder if the men in Ukraine would still be fighting if they knew that their women were being used by men in the West. Maybe that's why more men than ever are trying to get out of Ukraine. These women are also all over the place on Lonely Fools these days. Moving on, you can tell a lot about somebody based on their kids. You have Baron Trump, and he looks pretty normal. The others were raised by Obama, Biden, and Harris, and they look like degenerates. If you can't take care of your kids, then how well can you take care of your country? 
Then again, I don't know who that chick is on the top right, but she doesn't look like Obama's daughter. Emhoff also kind of reminds me of the sailors buried in the Arctic. Number seven, Snoop Dogg and Doja Cat cancel shows in Springfield, Ohio, because of concerns for their safety. Because 15,000 of the new residents in that town think that Snoop Dogg is a new menu item. Pitbull and Cat Stevens have also apparently pulled out of that concert tour for safety reasons. But what I want to know is why musicians name themselves after cats and dogs in the first place. Up next, why did children in the 1950s act more respectful in public? Because they were beaten if they didn't, of course. Because we all know that ass whoopings were a great discipline builder. Today, if kids misbehave, parents stick a phone in front of them instead of actually punishing them. Another reason that kids are better behaved in the 1950s is because they had both the mother and father. Maybe we should also bring belt smackings back. Number 13, this woman says that she's the American dream. Sounds like someone's been dreaming big, and I don't know the American dream these days has diabetes. But you know what they say, one man's dream is another man's nightmare. Whoever is dreaming of her and having a nightmare must be deep in a coma to fit all that in. Moving on, introducing the world's smallest implantable chip, but don't freak out. It also sort of makes you wonder if that's what them shots were for. And the conspiracy theorist really looks tired being right all the time. I don't think that's what was in them, but I wasn't going to take a chance by getting a jibby jab. It's not that I thought there was a conspiracy. I thought there was incompetence because there were no safety tests. Number 15, you need to keep off this property because trespassers will be prostituted. So stay off Pimp Daddy's land unless you want to work in his brothel. Either that or spelling is not his strong suit. I think that's it. Either those two options or some warnings are just a little bit too creative. I just hope that Kamala doesn't set foot on that property or this might happen to her. Again. Up next, why did The Weeknd choose this for his new album cover? Is he trying to tell us that he went to one of Puff Daddy's parties and was forced to take a schwing schwing and submit to the music industry? Or that he's finally ready to collaborate with Drake? He looks like he's blinded by the light and about to get some jizz in his eyes. That is the new album cover minus the shadow. I guess somebody played a prank due to the Puff Daddy controversy. Number 17 is Heather and she says that she's not attracted to 99% of men. And that the 1% that she does pick always turn out to be men that don't want her. Sounds like a future cat lady to me. She's competing with 100% of women for those 1% of guys. And she's just pump and dump material. This is the nature of the black pill and at least she's being honest about it. Moving on we have Sydney Sweeney's new Instagram post. Looks like she's putting the hawk in two. This is what two degenerates look like. But would someone please tell the Hawk 2 girl, Haley Welch, that her 15 minutes of fame were over weeks ago? She's got a podcast now and she's almost got 100,000 subs. Number 19, after the Democrats replaced Biden with Kamala, Biden wore the Make America Great Again cap, probably despite them for forcing him to step down. We're living in bizarre world with Cheney endorsing Kamala and Biden endorsing Trump. It's almost as if party lines no longer matter. I wouldn't be surprised if he's not already a full-fledged member of Team Mega just to stick it to his own party. Back in the 70s and 80s, people were against gay marriage, when actually this is all it was with Bert and Ernie living their best lives. I wonder which one was the bottom and which one was the top. Or maybe they were versatile. I think Ernie was the more feminine one and the catcher not the pitcher, if you know what I mean. Because he would always drive Bert crazy nagging him and never give him a moment's peace. Bert was treated the way a wife treats her husband, driving her mad. Number 21, Jesse James once gave a widow enough money to pay off her debt collector, and then robbed the debt collector as the man left the widow's house. Is this based or white knight behavior? It was probably Chad-like behavior and most likely he had fun with that widow and just left after he was done. I'm sure she repaid him in fellatio favors. He robbed the bank's debt collector and got a good time for free. He had his cake and he got to eat it too. Up next is a man that endured chemo and said goodbye to his family, only to then discover that he was misdiagnosed and he never had cancer. Well, at least the lawsuit will make his family set for life. He's lucky to have survived, though. I know someone that had cancer discovered and got chemo a couple weeks later, and that chemo was what ended her. Chemo is like setting your house on fire while you're in it, because of a burglar, hoping that the whole house doesn't burn down before the burglar does. Number 23, up next, this woman is saying that if God wanted her to only have one boyfriend, then why did he give her three holes in ADHD? Actually, if he wanted her to have only one boyfriend, then what he really would have done is given her her self-respect and better decision-making skills. 
Gon also looks like he wanted to make her suffer by giving her a butterface. At the very least, she can get her cuck boyfriend to invite two of his buddies over to help make her airtight. Moving on, what the hell happened to Laura Loomer's face? Looks like she got some virulent social media disease that ate the part of her brain telling her not to get too much Botox. Many in Gen Z look older than the millennials because they're getting plastic surgery in their 20s, Bogdanoffing themselves before their time. I'm not sure what Trump sees in her anymore. After all, she's made one of her three holes ugly and unusable. Number 25 in the last one looks like Gen Z is coming to its senses, saying that wokeism is only for ugly people. Yes, the lefties that are both ugly physically and mentally. Communism has always been the revolt of the ugly, misshapen and resentful against the beautiful. AOC is not particularly ugly, but I'd rather eat broken glass rather than going out on a date with her. Let's hope that Gen Z makes being woke unpopular. So that's it for another Memes of the Week. Please give this video a like to push it up in the algorithm and so new viewers can find it. If you enjoy this series and want me to keep making it, then donate at the PayPal subscribe star links below. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day. Ain't cheers.